Lord, I didn't have you, I brought you. It's a good job you're doing. I joined the Vikings in the year 2000. And I'm a gray-headed elder. Fraternity wasn't like this in my days. Because we only existed in the four worlds of the citadel of learning, like colleges of education, polytechnics, and universities. I joined Vikings in the university and I graduated. I've taught people who are lawyers today, who are doctors. Uh, we give an orientation, not to harass people, not to oppress people, to be generous and to do good. And uh, that's why in my days, as a confraternity member, nobody will know you except your members. <clears throat> it's very hard to know us because we're just like every other person. And fraternities that they exist in the street, we only existed in the, in the highest issues. And what did they take the fights to the street? If there was any fight, of course, you have your leadership in 400 or 500 levels who wanted to graduate, and they would quickly call for the peace talk. But today, we have people. Uh, from the street coming to the university to pull ahead. And even the leadership of a unit might not even know who is tracking who under him, you know. You would just roll without taking authorization from your leadership and you just start war. A mechanic can just come to a, a university and hit somebody and start a war without the D1 in that school knowing about it. Now, I know some of my Vikings members will not be too happy with what I want to say, but I'm just appealing to everybody hearing my voice now to hear from the uh, national leadership of each of the fraternity to the smallest unit and to the uh, youngest uh, fraternity member of the district. I say we are very stupid people and we are idiotic. We're killing ourselves over nothing, over supremacy. We are killing ourselves. I cry daily in Nigeria view when I come on your channel and you tell us this person got married three days ago and they caught him down to die. Somebody just got married. I wept yesterday. I wept so much yesterday when I saw three baggers down, one axe man down. I wept. I wept when Bagas went to kill that Egede doctor, the ex-man who, who was a medical doctor. We are short of doctors in this country, and we still go after the few that we have in the name of Confraternity. Does it really make sense? Is the man on black my enemy, or the man on yellow berry is my enemy? Is the hair member with his blue berry to my enemy? I have friends in Axe, in NBM, our friends in SEC, our friends in, in Alora. These are people I also with. These are people I make things happen with. These are my friends. These are my brother. Every Egede man hearing my voice is my brother. It's a black man like me. It's an African like me. It's a Nigerian like me. Race, religion, and now fraternity has blinded our hearts and separated us. And we are not fighting the war on the battle we're supposed to be fighting. And we are losing out. The politicians in Nigeria have declared war on youth. They took food from our tables. They made us very hungry. Then they bastardize our education. They make it unattractive first. Then they make it underfunded. So that in the first place, you don't want to go to school because you think if I go to school, what becomes of me? There is no job. These people can create jobs, but they're doing this intentionally. They send their kids to America, to Canada, to London to go to school. They send them abroad to go and go to school so that when they finish, they come back to Nigeria to continue where their fathers have started. They know they are going to die or retire someday. So they are grooming their children to take over from them. And when you remove food, and you remove education from a man, that man becomes a junkie. That is why every Nigerian youth now is on drugs. And our ladies who are going to be official mothers and wives, they are into prostitution. So that a youth practically has no official. And during election, they give us guns. 
they give us a token of what they have stolen to go and fight and eliminate their enemies and we are glad to carry out these duties i say we are stupid we have these politicians they have declared war on youth in fact is we are cowards we are too cowardice to fight back SARS will enter the streets harassing young people even if you have iphone 4 they ask you where you got the money to buy it and you see youth being killed for scamming a white woman or white man of hundred dollars but we have governors who have looted billions what about that efcc chief who stole money these are criminals they know the real criminals are in government may they come after the youth they send the efcc after the youth they send SARS after us they set police everybody's against the youth you're in the head SARS. you see how they massacred our brothers and sisters are lucky to get but we did nothing we closed our eyes that was the first time we ever challenged this demo we scrapped SARS, but we, we we lost blood we lost people and we did fight back we should have occupied the streets i say that we unite here and we declare war on the politicians these are demons if the axe man decides to roll on the ground with his axe it will be our army let the sec occupy the sky they will be our air force let jurists combine with buccaneers and vikings to roll on the sea and we will be the navy and we have eyes everywhere i know they have bulletproof cars but when we roll together we get them down we start targeting their grassroots people they are spokesmen they are chairman their secretary the people who make things happen in the street will target those ones those are our enemies those are the people who have sold our future into slavery the man you kill in the street is not your enemy i watched some videos when they put guns to the head of them they are doing video you look at the man they are about to they are about to kill you see him skinny looking wretched this man doesn't hate him and you put a bullet in his head for fraternity sake it makes me cry i am begging you with the gray head on my head with tears in my eyes on my knees i'm begging every fraternity member hear my voice to soften your heart to realize that the man you are killing is not your head nigeria view every day i don't comment i just read every day you are lamenting on whatsapp everywhere governor delta state please intervene governor i do please do something the killing is too much they will not do something they don't care they don't care about you they will not do something because you are making the job easier they want to kill you they want to eliminate us but you make the job very easy we are eliminating ourselves so they just pull their hands and watch they don't like us they want you to diminish so that their children will come and continue from wherever they stop we are losing great men look at my brothers in south africa the people who are dying in south africa they are not kids they are old men look at chidrak when they brought him down his face was crying look at that mikey member kingsley i saw the video where i was going down that's this a old man with wives and children and we kill ourselves I said we fight the government and we unite religion race and fraternity has separated us it's high time we're united and we begin to fight back if you call me today that you want to go out who you eat a politician i will roll with you i don't care what your color is i will roll the heat with you and if i go and do not come back i'll be dying for something meaningful in my children in the future they will be happy knowing that their father died while trying to fight for their future when buari came into power a bag of rice was 8500 naira, and they said okay he wanted to protect local he wanted something local he didn't care about the population he didn't care about the principles of demand and supply even if he's unage i know he lost his certificate so we really don't know 
even if it's an illiterate, he has ministers of finance and economics, he has advisors who could have advised him. But the focus is not to help the youth and the populace. The target is to enrich his cronies, his friends in agriculture. And now he has enriched them. They took good rice from us and they are giving us rubbish for 40,000 air per bag. That is an Indian table. And now it's so expensive. And do you think Buhari and all these people eat this stupid rice they give us? This rice that tastes like plastic. It doesn't eat that shit. So our men, when they wake up, they're hungry. They're jobless. They smoke, they drink. And what do they do after that? You have a lot of energy. They take it up upon at, at, on themselves, killing themselves. We're killing ourselves because of the aggression, because of the hunger for places that these people are forced, are forced on upon us. And our women, what do they do? They are into prostitution. No man is ready to marry anyway. There's no marriage for them. Maybe they will be a single mother with one or two kids. And they still have to fend for these kids. And they sell their pussy. These are fish wives, these are fish mothers. What will they produce? What will, will, will the prostitute produce? Only God can answer the question. They've made us so hopeless. They've made us so useless. That is why we go nowhere. I say we begin to fight back. That is an economic war. Then they bastardize the education. First, they discourage you from having education to make it unattractive. If you graduate, you can get a job, so you don't want to do it in the first place. And if, if you go there, the schools are underfunded and they are closed down because they don't want you to have the light that education gives. And they send their children to America, to London. Buhari Kids have graduated yearly from UK universities. Same as Rufai and all the governors and uh, senators and rep members. I say we strike back. I said, we strike back and we begin to take that, that aggression back on them. Where we fought for and such. They are using police and the FCC to, to, to arrest the youth. If you have iPhone 4, they ask you, where did you get money to buy this? But you have one asked Tinobu where I got the money to buy that bully of owns. You have not asked Dino Milai where he gets the money to buy all these Ferrari packs in the background. He packs Ferrari in the background and he's dancing. Why Nigerian youth, average Nigerian youth hasn't taken breakfast? I say we begin to target these people and we begin to roll. If we see on the sea and we occupy the sky and we move on the ground and we roll together, we will deliver our country. We run up and down. We go to Italy, we go to Dubai, we go to Kenya, Uganda. We still continue this fraternity fight. What is the sense in it? What do we gain? Nigeria view, please answer me. What do we gain? What is our game? I cry every day. We kill doctors. We kill husbands. We kill fathers. The politicians, they are free. The ones, politicians don't care if you kill yourself. Even if all youth die, they don't care. So far, the oil is flowing. The far, too far, the money is there for them to steal. They don't care about our lives. Even if we all perish, they don't care. Let's unite. I am begging each fraternity member that is hearing my voice. We are brothers, we are blacks, we are Africans, we are Nigerians, we are one. Let us stop this fight and make sure.